So we were just discussing there about um, uh, being on the road. Now, is it the Itchy Fingers tour you finished just now? Or that, that finished last year, yeah, last December, and now we're on It's Phony Rock and Roll. It, of course it is. It's Phony Rock and Roll. That's the one currently going on, uh, and the guys are halfway through the tour, and, uh, and they've gone from Taunton uh, right, right through to... Uh, Dunmo. Where, where is Dunmo? It sounds Essex. like Wales. No, it's in Essex. Oh, Essex. So yeah, but you, we've been to Istanbul in amongst all of that. So, so I mean, we don't go in straight lines. <laughs> it's global, man. Oh wow! But but um, it isn't just Britain you play in, is it? No, no. I mean, that's the mainly the UK itinerary you've got there. Um, but whether it's a public show or a corporate show, we do a lot of travelling abroad and. Um, we were victims of Terminal 5 last week because we went to play at the Istanbul Film Festival because they were launching the Stones film for Turkey and they thought they wanted to get us to play and the other guys couldn't make it. You know, the real ones. Um, well, yeah, but they, they, cause are, they, are they doing the premiere all over the world? I, I did see the premiere. The they, are, they have done some premieres. I don't know that they're going to do all of them. Um, but the, the, it's great that some... Um, People that really love the Stones, and when the Stones are raising their profile either through touring or in this case a film, it gives it reflects very well for us because we get a lot of business as a result of people wanting them to be to, to, around to do something, and they can't either afford them or they can't get them. So we're the next phone number on the book, really. Well, really, you're promoting them, aren't you? In many respects. Yeah, we're doing we're doing a lot of their yeah below yeah. line advertising, as they call it because um, even though they are the great Rolling Stones, they're not in the papers every day, no. but um, for instance, it was in a paper that I saw you were doing Hayes, mm. and I thought, oh, I must go along. And, and so, in a way, you were doing just that, and, and I had people with me who hadn't seen you before, and they thought, thought it was tremendous, and the send-up, and going back to uh, Brian Jones, and you know, you guys have really perfected that you know you obviously watched a lot of videos and oh, oh yeah I mean, it's in my blood as well so I mean you, you have to be a fan to start with just to to maintain an energy for that kind of interest because the um, running about Mick does you know when he's on a stadium it, yeah it's like being a, a top athlete almost. well yeah I mean I've run marathons in the past purely get me up to speed for Mick you know because Although he did have a bit of a past where he maybe drank and smoked too much, essentially now he's a really fit bloke. And even during all that time of him being a bit more indulgent, he's always been so physical on stage. Because I noticed on stage you, you, your muscles are pumped up now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mick, of course, hasn't got what you'd call a muscly body. I mean, he I'm, hasn't, no. I, he, <laughs> he's a skinny bugger, as a lot of people well, would say. He's too skinny, really. I mean, but that makes great pictures, I think, being skinny. I mean, I'm not as skinny as he is, but I'm, I'm as honed as he is. I, I've probably got the body that he'd really like. Yeah, because I had notes here. You, you, uh, your, um, that was further on, something I was going to ask you later, but uh, your gym... Mm. Uh, you, you do train with now. Who did you train with? You, you would know who you train with. What, not, what, I mean, I've trained, what, what, the gym I go to has got lots of celebs. So yeah. Nigel Haver's often in there, chucking his weights around. Lionel Blair was a member. Lionel Blair, that's and, it. And uh, you know, I mean, I teased Lionel um, one afternoon because he knew that I was in this particular band, and I and I said to him, you know, jokingly in the sauna, and it, his hairstyle's funny. It doesn't change when he's in the sauna. It doesn't get wet and flat like most people's. I, I hope it's a real hairstyle. Um, but anyway, I said to him, do you think... <laughs> no, I think Lionel has looked after himself. He I, has. I, I, I've not seen him for years, but uh, funnily enough, his wife... This is another, so I've always got some story, but his wife, mm. I took her to see the opening of Hair, because I was going out with her sister at the time. Ah. And I said, oh, do you want to come along and see Hair? She said, I'd rather you took my sister. I went, what do I want to take your sister for? Because <laughs> number one, she'd really appreciate it. And number two, she's gorgeous. Oh, so well. uh, I said, well, how will I know her at the, at outside? You know, she said, you won't miss her. And, and it's true. She was striking. Very striking. So, so I did actually take her with me. And then afterwards, we went back to Lionel's. And uh, he was something else, because he's performing all the time. Oh, Lionel. he's fantastic. Yeah. You, I mean, he's exactly the same. Yeah. You know, and, and he would tell jokes uh, while you're working out, and 
and Bonnie Langford was a member there at the same time. That, that's right, I, fa I found the piece. So I've got to know Bonnie Langford as well. <laughs> yeah, Bonnie but, is um, Bonnie Langford, uh, I mean, turning up in a lot of things these days. Well, she, yeah, she's been at our gigs and, uh, you know, she's always, that, that, her and Lionel were actually really nice people. Well, say were, they still are very yeah. nice people. And um, I can see why the business still likes both of them, because I don't think you last unless you've got a huge, huge profile and you can afford to be nasty. I don't think you last unless you're just a nice person. Because uh, Bunny Langford's mother, Babette, uh, has got her own training school for mm. uh, budding actors. I know because one of my daughters, well, both of them went once, but one of them's going now. And uh, oh, right. she puts them through uh, quite strict training. Does and, she? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Get some, and there's some fantastic dancers there. You, you know, I know when I turn up sometimes to pick any up, who's met you, she came back. And, Backstage? Uh, yeah. yeah. I hope I was polite to her. I was, wasn't I? Yeah, they thought you were great. <laughs> because, um, you know, that, that was something different for them. Yeah. You know, and then I said, oh, we'll go back and meet Nick Dagger. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you're really terrific and looked after us and uh, re really appreciate that. But, uh, no, a wonderful show and I highly recommend it, you know, I'm not just saying that, I, I, I thought it was really great. And the, the funny things you have going on, especially those films, uh, did you dream up um, the actual scripts? Was it you, Steve? Yeah, I mean, I get a, a, a basic idea of what I think would be a funny situation. They're not really formally scripted, a lot of it just comes off the top of my head, you know, I mean... It, I, you get the general idea. I've tried writing the scripts because I fancied myself as a script writer and nine times out of ten, probably because I haven't got the skill to actually write words uh, in that way, I found I was better off giving myself a general idea and then just acting it out, whatever came off the top of my head and that's always been the best result. So. No, I, I mean we, we did go back as it happens because the great uh, Brian Longley, who was one of the finest uh, publicists around, in fact had he lived, bless him, he would have been like Max Clifford. Yeah, he worked with Max for did, a while. Did he really? Yeah, he shared an office with him in New Bond Street. Yeah. No, I didn't know that. Yeah, he did. Was yeah. that before Starlight Artist? No, it was after Starlight. Oh, wow. Yeah. Because I often wondered, would Max Clifford know who I was because of the Starlight connection? Because he's so geared up, Max Clifford, and knows everybody. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, I, I would imagine a guy like him's probably got an encyclopedic memory and if he's met you once, you're in there somewhere. Mm. You know, you're in his little filing cabinet in his head and he'd, he'd thumb through and say, yeah, I met you on such and such a day. I bet. Yeah. But, but, but Brian Longley was absolutely amazing, I thought, as a PR because he handled, you know, everybody like from Fleetwood Mac uh, to the Tremolos to the Marmalade and, and Starlight Artist is, is where I first met you. Mm. Uh, I mean, you, you've done so much, but that, I think that was the first time that, um, you know, I encountered you because, well, I made a record called Apple Pie, yeah. and Brian Longley did the PR on it, and he, he was just amazing, the ideas that came out, and said, so what we'll do, we'll, we'll start off sending all the press a small Apple Pie. I don't know if you remember this, Steve. Yeah, I remember, they were those little um, individual fruit pies, Fruit pies, they? to yeah. start off with just yeah. a small one. Then the next day they got a bigger pie, and it, and it went on like this. But <laughs> it certainly did the trick because like everybody remembered it. Yes. And, and, and we got like, oh, it was tremendous. We got every play in the book. Mm. So you know that team at Starlight was sort of quite fantastic. But I think you were more behind the scenes then. Yeah, I joined Starlight initially working in the accounts department. Well, that and was behind the scenes. Well, that was very behind the scenes. But the great thing about that was, I mean. I got to see how the finances of running a band on the road worked, or in most cases then, how it didn't work. You know, bands were always coming in saying they wanted a bit of money in advance, and so there I was dolling out the tremolos and the marmalade, you know, 50 quid here, 50 quid there, because they, they were short of money in that particular month. I mean, I wasn't in the accounts for too long, about six months, and then I went into plugging, so I got to know all the producers at the, uh, at the radio stations, and I've been very lucky because I had a music business career that I learned every aspect of the business, because from there I went to publishing, then I learned production, and it was a real good background, and I've just tried to do a little bit of everything all my life, you know.